Hey everybody, thanks for joining for my Gentle Lady build. Now the Gentle Lady was first designed and kitted by Carl Goldberg back in 1980 and it's remained popular ever since. People built them from kits, scratch built them and a lot of people even modified them. The beauty of the design however lies in its simplicity and the basic two channel control. So in this scratch build I'm going to be doing that same setup. I'm using modern micro radio equipment and I'm building it half scale. But I'm sticking to the original structure so that it really looks the part. I've downloaded a copy of the original plan from our friends at outerzone.co.uk. Unfortunately, under lockdown, I'm not able to have them copied and scaled, so in this case I'm going to have to scale them by hand. I'm not too stressed about doing the scaling, I've done it many times before and it shouldn't take more than an hour or so to get the basic dimensions on paper. I've added captions throughout this video to help share as much information as possible about the materials and equipment I've used in this build. Of course, you can click through and pause as much as you like to pick up all the details. The captions I've added about the carving or the nose block are relevant to just about any carving job. Don't just start hacking at them or sanding away. Do it systematically, follow a plan and you'll end up with a great result. Remember to do the shaping with relatively coarse paper, then go down to nice fine paper for the final finishing in preparation for covering. Making the rib templates was time consuming, but now I've got them for the next time. This model turned out so well, there's bound to be another one. In case you're wondering, I'm using thin CA throughout this build. I've got the plan protected with clear tape, that stops the structure from sticking to the plan permanently. This allows for quick assembly and solid joints, just the way I like them. With the airframe finished, it's time to get going with the covering. Now, I was fortunate to find a couple of rolls of Solight. Unfortunately, it's no longer manufactured, but if you look around online, you may find a roll or two available. Auralite and Ultracoat Park Light would be two good alternatives for Solight. Be careful of using standard iron-on film on lightweight structures like this, because they shrink a little aggressively and you may well battle to keep them straight. The fuselage was the easy part. The tail, however, is a little more delicate, so I had to work carefully to avoid warping it. Here you'll see some images of how I've used the covering film to hinge the elevator. First it's covered from the bottom, then wrapped around. This is all done in one piece of film. The next step was to trim it off nice and neatly, and then stick it to the top surface of the stabilizer, fully deflected. Flip the elevator over, and stick a second strip along the back edge. That's it, elevator hinged, ready to go. The wing covering was relatively simple, although I did work carefully to make sure that I didn't build in any warps. Having the panels nice and straight is absolutely critical for the glider to fly nice and efficiently. I applied all the panels in the order shown in these images. That resulted in a nice clean finish.
It's looking so good with the covering finished, I can't wait to get it flying. So I'll have to do the final assembly and install the radio equipment next. I've included the mouse in this picture just to give some scale. So far you could easily be forgiven for thinking this was a standard sized gentle lady. I forgot to put the reinforcement in for the tow hook earlier in the build, so I've quickly dropped that in now. I went for an old school push rod, nothing wrong with that, simple to do and not too heavy. Little homemade plywood horns did the job. And I've gone for pull pull on the rudder. I literally used cotton thread and that's all that's necessary for a lightweight model with very light loads like this. A pair of economical micro servos, a micro receiver and a single cell LiPo make up the flight pack. All of those components together only weigh something in the region of 20 grams. With 10 grams of lead in the nose to get the CG right, she still only tips the scales at just under 100 grams. Two narrow strips of 30 second ply inside the hatch make for a neat attachment method. With the model balanced correctly and the control set up right, there's only one thing left to do before she's ready to fly, a quick photo shoot. Thanks for watching everybody. Remember, you can like the video for free and if you do subscribe, you won't miss the flying video when I upload it soon.